second Monday of the month. At six o'clock today, I dropped something off at Tim's house. He asked if I wanted to stick around and have a beer, but I said I couldn't stay because I had a date with Becky. Tim said he'd call me again when he cashed his latest paycheck. As I walked to Becky's, a woman in a turquoise car rolled past and stared directly at me. Becky was in a cheerful mood when she answered her door. We watched TV for a while, and then she told me she'd bought a new camcorder. We went into her bedroom and made a little X-rated video. Becky said she'd put it on a DVD and drop it off at my place tomorrow. When I left Becky's house, the same woman from that afternoon was parked across the street in her car. It really creeped me out, and walking home through the dark was about as nerve-wracking as playing Russian roulette with five full chambers. Second Tuesday of the month. At about five o'clock this afternoon, I went down to the lobby to check my mail and pick up the DVD from Becky. But the mailbox was empty. It suddenly occurred to me that the mysterious woman from the day before might have stolen my mail. I rushed to look outside, and there she was, watching me from her car. I ran forward to confront her, but before I'd made it across the road, she roared off down the street. Second Wednesday of the month. Tim called me at noon to say he just cashed a paycheck and to ask if I could come make a delivery. I told him I'd be over in half an hour. I'd left my building and was halfway across the front lawn when voices were suddenly screaming at me to get my hands in the air and I found two guns pointing directly at my face. As I stood with my hands up, a familiar figure rose from behind the hedge and informed me I was under arrest. Turns out she hadn't been stalking me. At least not in the way I'd imagined. She was an undercover cop who'd been tracking my movements, snapping pictures, collecting evidence. One of the officers searched me and found the baggie I'd been bringing to Tim. Another cop headed upstairs to my apartment. They must have known what was up there. A homegrown cannabis version of the Amazon rainforest. I wonder what'll happen to Tim and the rest of my customers. Probably nothing. No one cares about the users. It's me they were after. The grower. The dealer.